So I'm going to open up this video by talking about semantics. Let's talk about the idea of a franchise caliber player. Because no, when I say franchise, I don't mean Connor McDavid, I don't mean Crosby, I don't mean Gretzky. These guys are generational players. They define a generation. To me, what a franchise player is, is somebody who defines a franchise. Somebody who, when you think of that hockey team, you think instantly, okay, Henrik and Daniel Sedin. When you think Philadelphia, you think Claude Giroux. When you think, I don't know, Colorado, you think Nathan McKinnon. These are franchise caliber players. And to me, the differentiation between franchise and elite is that franchise players would still be franchise players if you place them onto most other NHL teams. You move McKinnon over to, I don't know, St. Louis. You still think McKinnon when you think St. Louis. You move Elias Pettersson over to Minnesota, all of a sudden he is a franchise-defining guy alongside of Kirill Kaprizov over there. Sure, you can have one or two franchise players on the team, it's not really restrictive to one, in my opinion, like Sedin Sedin, were both franchise guys on Vancouver, so it makes sense. But when I think of the Dallas Stars, for the longest time, that franchise-defining player, to me at least, was Jamie Benn. Mostly because he won an Art Ross back in 2014 or whenever the heck it was with like 80-something points on the year. But him and Sagan to me were guys at the top of the NHL. Sagan was right there with him and I thought that Jamie Benn was that franchise-altering player. Now, give it a few years, Jamie Benn to me is no longer that type of caliber guy. I'd think that Miro Heiskanen is a franchise-defining defenseman to be because he's just got such a high ceiling. But I'm going to go out there and use that label. I'm going to go out there and label one of these younger guys that doesn't really get too much of a spotlight, especially compared to his younger brother, as a potential Dallas Stars franchise-defining player. Let's talk today about Jason Robertson. Now, I know some of you might go out there and say, Lego, you're biased, bro. Jason Robertson, Nick Robertson, their mom's from the Philippines. They're half Filipinos, and you're Filipino, so you automatically have a bias towards them. And yes, that might be true. It's probably 100% true, actually, but like, still, the reason I'm making this video is because on the R Hockey subreddit, when they posted Jason Robertson's overtime goal last night, his hat trick goal, by the way, against the Winnipeg Jets, one of the threads that was in the comments was indeed this conversation sparked up by Hara Alexa 1993. Jason Robertson is our franchise player. He is the best player under 25 I've ever seen wear a Stars sweater. And then a whole bunch of Dallas Stars fans go out there and reply, yeah, I agree. Somebody asked, oh, is he better than Heiskanen? And somebody said, yeah, Miro's fantastic, but if I had to only pick one, I would pick Robertson. Miro on our team? Yeah, Robertson is better. Miro on another team? Probably not. So, the fact is, it's not just me who's kind of thinking about this. And when I saw this pop up on my Reddit feed, I had to take a step back and think about it. I was like, huh, the idea of Jason Robertson being a franchise player, am I ready to give him that label? And then, with every highlight that I saw, with every statistic that I saw, I slowly started to conform myself into saying, yeah, he definitely is. Jason Robertson yesterday against the Winnipeg Jets went out there and scored himself a hat trick. And these goals were fantastic goals. All three of them absolute highlight reels right there. The first one, he gets the puck on the side of the net right in front beside Hellebuck, and he goes back and forth and back and forth, and Hellebuck gets his jock straps completely deep to the roof, and Robertson easily slips the puck outside, inside, right behind Hellebuck, and he just pots it in easily with the open cage. He doesn't even sell it, he just kind of walks it off. This is like a goal you score in beer league where you just dangle the goaltender out of his pants. Even the commentator on the broadcast, he said something like there must be some emotional damage for Connor Hellebuck because of the goal that Robertson scored. Just the hockey smarts, man. Fantastic skills. Give it a few more minutes, and in the second period, eventually, it's Robertson who gets himself a cross-crease pass in front. Rather than one-timing it, like most players would do, he takes the puck over to the short side once again and dangles it through, pots it five-hole on Hellebuck. Just another in-your-face, I'm gonna just take the pants right off of ya and go through your legs type of goal. And then in overtime, he had himself a breakaway that he forced due to sheer power of will. Blake Wheeler completely gets beat here. Robertson 
takes it over, he comes and he shoots, he scores, and he lies down on the ice afterwards because he was completely out of gas. That was like the end of a one minute, 30 second shift or whatever it was. But now, take a look at where Robertson is in the numbers after this hat trick game. 51 points in 46 games on the year. He's on pace for 82 points over 74 games. And 40 goals too! This is a guy making $795,000 till the end of this season. He's gonna need a contract extension, and all of a sudden now you're thinking, okay, where the heck are they gonna land monetarily with this guy? I mean, he was a second round pick back in 2017, he's 22 years old, he's a big dude, 6'3", a lot taller than his younger brother Nick Robertson for the Leafs. But where the heck did this guy come from? How did he get so good so quickly? This is his second full year in the NHL. And if you take a look at his first season, 45 points, 51 games played, and you go over to the totals right here, take a look at this stat right here. Stars forward Jason Robertson will play his 100th career game against Winnipeg. He has 94 points so far in 99 career games. Make that 97 points because he got three points yesterday. So 97 points in 100 games. Over the past 20 seasons, there are only 11 players who have 94 plus points in their first 99 career games, which was what Robertson was at before yesterday's game played. He's right up there with Patrick Kane, Artemi Panarin, Pedersen, Barzal, Stasny, McDavid, Kaprizov, Malkin, Crosby, and Ovechkin. Okay, the last two, last five maybe actually, not really in the same conversation here, but Matthew Barzal, Elias Pedersen, Patrick Kane, Panarin... Robertson? Yeah, these are franchise players right here. These are franchise-defining guys that when I think of their teams, I think of them. When I think of the Islanders, I think Barzal. When I think of Vancouver, I think Pedersen. When I think of Chicago, I think Panera, and I think Kane. I think of all of these guys as franchise ceiling guys. And Robertson is right there. Robertson is at 97 points in 100 games. And so, this is some very extraordinarily impressive company that Jason Robertson has equipped himself with, and he is all of a sudden now one of the best Dallas stars that we have seen this season at 22 years old. This line that he is on with Pavelski and Rupe Hintz has been phenomenal. Like, I cannot stress how good this line has been. They're at the top of their team in points. Sagan and Ben are right there, fourth and fifth. Heiskanen is right there, of course, because Heiskanen is really good, but... This Robertson Pavelski Hints line is literally the second line in the NHL when it comes to expected goals for. They're better than the Gensel Crosby Russ line. They're better than Hyman McDavid Poliarvi. They're better than Larkin Bertuzzi and Raymond in terms of expected goals for. The percentages, they're still pretty good, but they're not one of the top. They're out here as the, I believe it's like the 12th line or something like that. But either way, I cannot stress how good this line has been. And for anybody who's going out there trying to predict contracts, this is probably one of the more difficult ones to go out there and talk about. An RFA who is a point per game, who is in the same conversation as Panarin and Kane and Pedersen and Barzal in terms of point production in his first 100 games, and who is playing on a team like Dallas that is going to get kind of screwed because they have Rupe Hints also expiring in a year from now. Dallas has themselves a difficult conversation to have with all these players. Pavelski, Radulov, Gurionov is also expiring too, but none other than Jason Robertson is the wild card in this situation. He's going to make things really interesting, and whatever payout he gets, I believe he's going to earn it, because this is a player that, if he continues along this trend in the long term, his skating doesn't matter anymore. Like, the reason he even went so late in the draft, he was a second-round pick in 2017, despite the fact that he was a really good scorer in the OHL, it was because of his mobility issues. Everybody talked about his skating and how he had clunky, cinder-block-like legs that didn't really move as much as you wanted an NHL prospect to be able to. But he has worked on that. Sure, he's not a phenomenal McDavid-like skater right now, but his skating is good enough to the point that the rest of the skills in his game, his offensive awareness, his positioning, his off-puck offense, and what he does when the puck is on his stick, the awareness of other players on the ice, the awareness of where his opponents are, the awareness of where his teammates are, what he needs to do to dangle by a guy or two. He's so smart, so skilled, and so quick at making positive decisions that... The skating isn't really that much of an issue anymore. Like, you see what he does when he has the puck in tight? He almost always scores because he's so smart in knowing, okay, I see that five hole open. I'm going to go out there, dangle it to the backhand, shoot it through. It's going to work. And it's astounding to me how often it does work because this guy 
coming out of the OHL like he did, second round pick, you know, his younger brother is a member of the Leafs, so he's such a good, highly touted name, you hear his name all the time, Nick Robertson, Nick Robertson, right? But the older, bigger brother and Jason, who's playing down there in Texas, to me, I'm starting to think he's in that franchise territory. So, you can let me know in the comments below all your thoughts about this and whether or not I'm right, wrong, whatever, do you disagree, agree? Am I hyping this guy up too much? Because if you think I am, then please, go watch the tape. Like, players with bad skating can still be defined as franchise guys. I think that Mark Stone is kind of in that category, but he's very good two-way, so there's a little bit of a difference there. But either way, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Jason Robertson and the Stars. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And, bye.